Welcome to the Q and responses, the question and responses for the chronic fatigue video. Uh, let's get into it. Question one from Russ Pearson's 9802. Is chronic fatigue the same as fibromyalgia? If different, what are the differences? What's the most effective method to repair the problem? When you look at this, fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, officially, it's 18 of 22 tender points on the body. Chronic fatigue uh, it, it, it is syndrome. When you look at it, forget the diagnosis. When people are trying to label something, it actually makes it think that it's a disease or a condition. Now, the symptoms are absolutely real, but if you look at it, it has an adaptive physiologic response. So whether you have chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, or any kind of crazy diagnosis, it look at the adaptive response of your body. Your body is in a stress state. Okay, that's it. That's bottom line. You are in a stress state, and there's three stressors. There's physical stress, chemical stress, and emotional stress. If you're trying to address your adaptive response and put a label on it because you have the appropriate symptoms in appropriate category, this is why we don't diagnose. Okay, in chiropractic, we assess each person individually. Chinese medicine does the same thing. They don't label people. And the way, when you think of this, 10 people with fibromyalgia, do they all have the same physical history, like physical trauma history? Do they all have the same emotional trauma history? Do they all have the same chemical trauma history? No, they don't. Okay, they're going to have similar adaptive responses, but to address that adaptive response without addressing the underlying cause is absolutely not going to be effective in correcting it. When you have that diagnosis or all the symptoms that can qualify you for that diagnosis, um, you've got to address the underlying factors. Physical stress, you've got to see that on static and stress x-rays, and you will see it. You're going to see, see um, long-term, you can predict how long ago the trauma was on the minimum time based on the amount of degeneration that's occurring. You can see um, cartilage that could start to ossify or mineral deposits because the person's been under such chronic stress that they don't have healthy digestive processes, so they're not breaking down the proteins to amino acids to build a healthy body. If they're in a chronic state of stress, their liver is going to be taxed. They may not be able to produce healthy amounts of bile or absorption or breakdown of those fats to fatty acids. So that means hormone issues, hair issues, skin issues. There, and the emotional components is all going to trigger that, that automatic nervous system balance. This is how you regenerate your body. Your whole system is boiled down to two factors. Your system has two switches. Sympathetic, which means protection or fight or flight. Parasympathetic is rest, digest, and regeneration. Anyone with these diagnoses of chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia is in a stress state. And these are adaptive responses. They are not a condition. And those adaptive responses mean that person is having major trouble regenerating their body. So you've got to address the physical stress identified and you can correct it, okay, on or predict that you can correct it on the static and stress x-rays. Then the chemical stress, change the sleep patterns. 100% of this, these people that have these collection of symptoms that can fall in those categories have poor sleep patterns. That's, that's where the body regenerates. And people say, oh, no, 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 no. I get up a couple of times a night, but I go right back to sleep. That's poor sleep. And then there's going to be emotional stress factor because you're going to all of these doctors that are supposed to know what's going on with your body. And they don't. They just, bam, slap a label on you and say, this is what you have. And that's a relief to a lot of patients. It's like, you know, you've been to 10 different doctors and these guys are supposed to know what's going on, but they don't. And now, oh, I have that label. Thank goodness. Now I know what it is. What do I do? Oh, I take a bunch of medications to handle my symptoms, which the symptoms are really your body adapting to the stress. No, my friend, you've got to address the underlying cause. It's going to be physical, chemical, and emotional stress. All three of those factors, once you address them, then your body can recover. Absolutely. Question two from Bella S. Hi, John. Can chronic fatigue be hormone related? Thank you. Another person asked about cortisol, um, KGCG. Um, great video, Dr. Bergman. As always, can you talk about ways to reduce cortisol? It, it, now, a lot of people will say adrenal fatigue, 
uh, low functioning thyroid or cortisol dominant. No, it's not reducing cortisol. Your body is going to excrete this and, and figure you've got the kidneys. On top of that is the adrenal gland. This is the pharmacy of the body. This is where cortisol comes from. And cortisol is going to be excreted based on your body's perception of the environment. If you perceive danger, if you have some type of tissue damage, if you have um, some type of underlying stressor, physical, chemical, emotional, your body is going to excrete the cortisol. It's also going to suppress the thyroid. It's going to activate the adrenal glands. It's going to shut blood supply down to the gut. And this is going to stop your tissue repair or delay your tissue repair. Now, if you cover up these symptoms with medication, that's going to further tax the system. So absolutely, it's hormone-related. Hormones are chemical messengers based on your perception of the environment. And your perception of the environment is based on the information given to your central nervous system. And the central nervous system controls and coordinates every function of the body, controls hormone production, which is the chemical communicators, controls the nervous system, you know, the, the reactions with the environment. So when you're excreting cortisol, your body, which is a brilliant anti-inflammatory, keeps you alive under short term. The reason cortisol gets a bad name is because people are not addressing the underlying causes. You have to address the physical, chemical, and emotional stressors that's causing your body to excrete the cortisol. And long-term cortisol, oh my gosh, you want to see it. You get a moon face, you get increased tissue damage. It just means that your body is in that stress state and you're not able to regenerate healthy tissue. So it's not cortisol's fault. You don't need to take medications to reduce it. It's, it's like cholesterol. Cholesterol is amazing for tissue repair. It doesn't clog arteries. And you've got one type of cholesterol, multiple different types of cholesterol carriers. Low-density lipoprotein is elevated, or LDL cholesterol, in tissue damage, and it's there for tissue repair. It's not bad cholesterol. Okay, so don't blame cortisol. Don't blame cholesterol. Your body, and this is the toughest thing I got to communicate, when I get patients with fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, all of these different adaptive responses, I say, look, your body is responding correctly based on the stimulus. We have to change that stimulus in the body, physical, chemical, emotional stress. So cortisol in short term keeps you alive. Long-term cortisol will damage the cells and damage your body's ability to regenerate. But it's not the cortisol's fault. It's the, the, uh, the lack of addressing the underlying causes or the lack of the stressors being addressed. And this is going to be the physical, chemical, and emotional stressors. Question three from Cookie the Third 572. Um, now, the person left a really long message, but here's the bullet points. Woman in her mid-20s has been struggling with chronic fatigue for many years. Went through many tests, blood, thyroid, EKGs, but no tests were abnormal. She joined the military and during boot camp was sent to the hospital with extreme weakness, fatigue, dizziness, tachycardia, even fell into an unresponsive state where she could hear but not answer or move. The hospital found nothing and blamed it on sleep deprivation. The one question that she can't get out of her head is how possible it is for her to fall apart and collapse without either the medical center or hospital findings indication that anything or something was wrong with her. At the point, she started to think that maybe she was going insane, and it was all psychosomatic. But even then, from what she's heard about, her body still shows signs of depress, which, uh, distress, which express itself in elevated heart rate, blood pressure. Um, this is her question. I would really like to hear about your experience and whether or not you think it's possible for someone to be experiencing a high unresponsiveness state bordering on unconsciousness after prolonged state of dizziness and heart racing while nothing shows up on the medical exams. Um, they're not looking for the cause. Biggest thing here is when you're talking about boot camp, and this is something that we can't even talk about on social media. But on boot camp, they put you through a standard process where they do certain medical procedures that are absolutely linked to the symptoms that you're talking about. We can't talk about those medical procedures, um, but you, you are experiencing a stress state. Three stressors, physical, chemical, emotional. The, the neurologic symptoms that you're getting are the heart racing, 
that means that your body is in a distressed state. And when you talk about, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with tr trying to find the words that I can get around the sensors. Just know that in boot camp, there's certain um, medical procedures that everybody is, is inducted with. And those can have a negative or a trigger a TH2 or an inflammatory response in the body. And that is what you're experiencing. Now, they're, it's not going to show up because they're looking for um, genetic markers. Maybe, okay, they're going to look for um, some type of viral infection. So neutrophils, basophils, they're going to look for some type of cellular response. But they're not going to, and they're going to look at the mean corpuscular volume of the red blood cells. In this acute state, um, you're going to have um, elevated cortisol levels, which is going to be stress. You're going to see ad adrenaline is going to go up yeah, or epinephrine, norepinephrine. All of the stress hormones, you're going to have decreased blood supply to the gut. So this is absolutely, absolutely a response to something that has, um, that you've experienced. I almost said something that was done to you. Okay. Something that you experienced. <laughs> oh God. The climate we're in. Um, so um, uh, uh, let's address the underlying cause. If there were some type of toxins that you were exposed to, and that is absolutely what I'm suggesting, but I can't talk in detail. I'm going to talk further in detail on our site, the Dr. PVIP, where I can speak freely without answers. Look at chlorella and spirulina. That's going to start detox the system. Get a live blood cell analysis right away you're going to see that the red blood cells should be separate. In your case, they're going to start to stack up. That stacking up of the red blood cells means they can't hold the oxygen. Dizziness is a brilliant, a brilliant um, response to uh, not enough oxygen to the brain. So the body wants to get that brain, uh, pass you out, and get your head level with the ground to increase oxygen. Just know that that brain has... Um, is suffering from a lack of oxygen. And this is going to be the passing out everything. Little one kilo brain, two pound brain burns 90% of the body's oxygen. So on a live blood cell analysis, you're going to see some of those um, reactions. And this is going to be huge. Um, and the doctors are not looking at a live blood cell analysis. They're not looking at the health of the red blood cells. They're not looking at, at, at the red blood cells stack and they look like stacks of coins. It's called rouleau coin formation. And then you've got to look at the physical stressor. So there had to be some underlying aspect that triggered this. And also your past history. If you had recurrent infections, such as urinary tract infections, and you were taking antibiotics, that means the gut was possibly leaky so that um, uh, the, the antibiotics are poisonous molds. This may have predisposed you to having a reaction with some of the interventions that they forced on you. Um, just look at boil the whole thing down to physical, chemical, emotional stress. And the doctors are not looking for this. They're looking to label you with a disease and say that it's your fault that you're experiencing this, not any intervention they did. So they're not going to look for a cause that they did. So physical stress, get digital x-rays and static x-rays of the entire structure. And I mean the pelvis, the low back, the thoracic, the cervical spine. Um, and that houses that autonomic nervous system that allows you to adapt to the environment correctly. You get an autonomic nervous system scan, a heart rate variability. This is going to show the status of your system. You're going to be in a, a sympathetic dominant or a low functioning parasympathetic dominant state. This will clue you in that there is a neurologic component to this. Then when you look at chemical stressors, a full body thermography would be amazing to show areas of increased metabolic response. The liver is going to for sure be taxed. There may be gut issues. There may be uh, renal issues, but it's going to be a response to some environmental stimulus that you experienced. And then the emotional component, literally reprogramming your subconscious. Look at emotional freedom technique, neurolinguistic programming. Um, look at uh, Dr. Dispenza's work. But you have to master your emotions, and that will help change that physical response that you've experienced. I'm, I'm sorry I can't be more clear to you, but this, this will help. Physical, chemical, emotional stress are the underlying causes, and, that, and your brain is not getting enough oxygen.
and that could be from blood that is not healthy based on some type of stimulus that that um that you were exposed to question four from bobby barney i'm familiar with the cortisol surges I have loads of continued extreme stress, and now it seems like I'm at a point where I'm calm uh, instead. Great blood pressure, breathing, able to uh, to so-called stare whatever in the face calmly without getting the cortisol or adrenaline rushes. Um, does that sound? Uh, um, does that signify anything good or bad? Um, not really. Okay, what it, what it does. And this is cool. We call them adrenaline junkies. Okay. When they're in a chronic sympathetic dominant state, they're happy with bombs going off. Okay. They're happy with a lot of things going on that, because then that matches their autonomic nervous system state. Now let's go on. It kind of feels like end stage numb in a way. It seems like I'm getting better in a way, or I just got to the point of not registering stress anymore. Cause believe me, the stress has intensified like a deer in the high beam lights and in eyes so continuously that the eyes don't dilate anymore. I hope that I explain this well enough to understand. I absolutely know how awesome I felt when I was able to get a few adjustments from your office. I can't wait to return for more of your awesome healing techniques. God bless you, brother. May God rain down blessings on you and your family and wonderful doctors you have trained. Thank you ever so much for being you and so awesome with teaching and healing others. God love you, and God love you too, brother. Um, that there is knowing that the adjustments were helping. Uh, what the adjustments are doing is it's addressing the physical stress, but it's also changing sensory input to the brain, and that change in sensory input to the brain is absolutely, absolutely vital for your brain to adapt correctly to the environment, and you are expressing. A comfort in it with that sympathetic dominant state, my adrenaline junkie brother <laughs> or, or sister. <laughs> Bobby could be both. Uh, and, and you're you're gonna see that that um, addressing those underlying stressors. So since you have been a patient, um, the, look at the sleep restriction therapy that we teach. Look at the neuro linguistic programming that we teach. And you're welcome to come back anytime, and we'll do a live blood cell analysis to make sure the blood's healthy. But we talked about the juicing and blending to clean the arteries. We talked about how to how to stabilize the pelvis and the exercises, the sitting and the exercises to get the curve back. And that's going to help address the the physical stressors. So all the exercises we gave you, the calf stretches, the the knee dangling exercises to get both halves of the brain, the walking barefoot with symmetrical movements, all of those things to change the input to that brain. And then changing the sleep patterns, cleaning up the blood, healing the gut, take care of all of that. And um, that that's the best source now. But know that when you're comfortable with a lot of things going on, it could be a really, really good thing. I'm really happy with a lot of things going on. But I do get my blood tested to make sure that I'm functioning correctly. And I do sleep like a baby. And when I say sleep like a baby, it's not getting up every couple hours crying. <laughs> I mean, going to bed, sleeping deep, waking up refreshed, okay? And that's what we want. And that's when the body regenerates because that's when your body goes through those rapid eye movement cycles. And that is massive tissue regeneration. Um, I look forward to seeing you again, my friend. Question five from Tony Powers. I'm rather speechless after watching the video, uh, but I only want to say and ask, why is none of this taught in school? Maybe better it isn't. I'd rather listen and learn from Dr. Bergman on that. God bless. God bless you too. Tony, okay, yeah, we got to look at this. The reason it's not taught in school and the reason critical thinking is not taught in school is because we have a pharmaceutical-based education. If we had a solution-based education, instead of prescribing medications, which all have multiple effects, I mean, some call it like cholesterol. Great, man, has a has an effect of lowering cholesterol, but it has multiple other effects of doing other damage. All you got to do is read the side effects. And, and it's not solution-oriented. See, we have a profit-driven medical system, which is okay, okay, if it, the health was the goal, but profit is the goal. And so doctors cannot, even though, let's say you have somebody with a headache, 
And you know, statistically, 97% of all headaches are coming from the neck. And so you should refer that patient to someone who can correct the neck, identify the problem and correct it. I mean, duh. Instead, they're prescribing a medication um, uh, such as Imitrex, okay, that ha- causes a rebound headache. I mean, that's an insane cycle. And by covering up the symptom with a chemical or a medication, um, the body is still in that stress state expressing it. So the reason it's not taught in school, you have to go back to the Flexner Report back in the 20s and 30s um, when the, the school or the education system was taken over by the pharmaceutical industry. And now the pharmaceutical industry um, is, has taken over um, pretty much the television, the politics. You know, they're the big money guys. So you can't even say anything against them. And until we change that, until the people get back the power to deal with themselves, this way it's insurance is paying for the medical system, that, that primary focus is to utilize chemicals to alter their physiologic responses. Um, or uh, diagnosing diseases, because doctors are not going to be paid to suggest healthy diet, exercise, sleep pattern changes. Doctors are not paid um, or taught to correct physical stressors or stabilize the spine or reverse arthritis or understand that high blood pressure is not a disease, that it's really adapting to some type of underlying stressor. That It's until we change an objective analysis where they're actually measuring the health of the person. And I like measuring it through live blood cell, thermography, pre and post x-rays. I I love the heart rate variability scan. So you can say, man, you're in stress. Now you're not. So you have some way to measure the stress level, not um, uh, measuring cortisol levels. Uh, Cortisol levels is a response to stress or measuring uh, T3, T4, or measuring TSH from the pituitary. Those are all end results of the body responding to environmental stress, not addressing the physical, chemical, and emotional stressors. There is no doctor there that does it. And then the segmented world that we have in the medical system of where you have the gastroenterologist and the neurologist and the orthopedic guy. Let's say somebody has an orthopedic trauma beautiful. They go to the orthopedic. They do surgery, set the bone, do whatever you know they need to do. God bless them. I've, <laughs> I've had a few breaks and fractures and big injuries. They've saved my life. Uh, then recovering from that, okay, what, what is going to be the end result? If you're in a chronic state of stress, you have decreased blood supply to the gut. That could lead to bloating. It could lead to uh, gastroparesis. It could lead to um, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth or SIBO because of the low stomach acid. And then you go to the gastroenterologist and he's going to give you drugs for that instead of addressing the sympathetic dominant state, which your body is literally shutting blood supply down to that digestive tract. So you're not able to process the nutrients so you can't regenerate the system. And, and then is since neurotransmitters are produced in the gut and you've been injured by the orthopedic and you start getting anxiety and stress, you're sent to the psychologist or psychiatrist who's going to give more medications instead of talking about symmetrical activity, instead of looking at the gut where neurotransmitters are produced, instead of looking at asking how your sleep patterns are. And and of course, you'll get a sleep medication, (laughs) which which is crazy because you're not going to get the deep sleep from a chemical. Um, it, It is. Why is it not taught in school? We just have to change the system. Now, if your question wasn't answered here, please go to the Dr. B VIP site where I can speak freely, but God bless you all. These, these were fantastic questions. Stay healthy, my friends. 